Hello friends, how are you? Hope you all are doing well. Myself, Shomen Lala. Welcome to Pharma Awareness Channel. In this video, we'll discuss one of the critical component of computer system validation. Yes, that is functional requirement specification. Some of we also can say this document as functional configuration specification or functional design specification. From this terminology, we can easily identify that what this document is. This is the document through which we are establishing our requirement with respect to functionality and creating the specification how we can achieve the requirement by defining the functionality specification. Functional requirement specification plays a vital role in system development life cycle of any computer system. From one example, we can easily identify that what functional requirement specification is. If you consider URS, user requirement specification is the direction to which we are going to achieve the computer system validation. And FRS is the path through which we can easily establish or we can easily reach the computer system validation. So one is destination and another one is direction or path. So in one example, we can say that URS is the fixation of your destination and FRS is the document or it is called as a track to reach the destination. Friends, we all know that for computer system validation, we need to satisfy many of the requirement. Your functional requirement specification document shall establish or shall define all these requirements. First requirement is interface requirement. As we all know, your computer system is driven by some user. So your user should be a interlinked or should have the relationship with your computer system. This documentation helps us to build or to specify the relationship between the user with the computer system. That's why it is fulfilling the interface requirement. Next one is business requirement. Through this documentation, you are specifying your functional requirement. So this document helps us to achieve the quality or to achieve the computerized system validation. And if you want to achieve the quality, then you have to validate your computer. And finally, if you are achieving the quality, then automatically the business will come. So if by defining your computerized system validation, through functional requirement specification, you are finally achieving the business requirement. This documentation helps us a relationship between the business requirement as regulatory requirement. So you have to specify this document in a careful manner. In that one, you can achieve the compliance as well as the business. Next one is the security requirement. Your computer system, which you are going to be validated this system will be used in a validated environment in a GXP environment. So you have to think the security first. Your system will be used by multiple user. So through your functional requirement specification, you have to control the security level for the multiple user access. Also, not only for the multiple user, whenever a single user is using your system, you have to control the security level. So in general, you have to fulfill through functional requirement specification. One is the interface requirement, business requirement, compliance or regulatory requirement, and finally the security. Additionally, I can say that FRS of any computer system validation is a high level diagram to achieve your user requirement. It contains a detailed list or a detailed script based system where you can achieve your user requirement and where you can specify all the system functionalities required. So what is the importance of functional requirement specification? First, this is a guiding document. It helps a developer to understand that how this system will work and how system will be established in any GXP environment. Next one is ensuring compliance. Through establishment of the functional requirement, you how you can achieve the compliance level, you can easily identify or you can easily guide in this document. Final is risk mitigation. If you are specifying some requirement with respect to computer system validation, 
then there must be a chance of different level of risk it may be user risk is may it may be computer system risk it may be a chances of multiple risks so this document helps us how you can mitigate the risk to fulfill the user requirement now if you write a effective functional requirement specification and document you have to think the following things first define system purpose clearly articulate the system functionalities clearly articulate the system intended functionalities second detail user requirements it helps us to build how user will interact with the system third not only the user requirement it also outlines the what is the requirement of the system how it will work and what are the requirement of a system to achieve the user requirement including use cases illustrates that how your system can be achieved your user requirement now finally the testing framework it ensures that how your system can be establish a defined role and to achieve that role how you will challenge and what is the outcome all these things will be des designed in this functional requirement specification now what is the key components of functional requirement specification first functional modules it is the detailed description of system capabilities next inputs and output specification of data handling and processing third performance requirements expectation of system responsiveness and reliability fourth user interface details specification of screens controls and navigation last one is system architecture that is defines the outline of the framework how system will be interact or client will be interact with the server your functional requirement specification should contains following things and all these things shall be mentioned in your document first and foremost things is purpose what is the purpose of this document second scope what are the systems which will be scoped in your system third is background fourth is hardware and software requirements next descriptions of the data how to enter in the system description of the operations performed by each screen descriptions of the workflow performed by the system descriptions of the data flow from the device or the client to the server description of system reports and other output next is who can enter the data in the system next how the system will meet the regulatory requirement or you need to think that your functional requirement specification shall be in a generalized document all the general audience or all the general reader can easily understand your functional requirement specification no need to think about technical things during read or during understanding of your functional requirement it can be easily understandable to any of the user so from that way you can maintain the system integrity as well as the compliance level next one is associated reference documents appendices history of changes and finally the document approval so all these things you can mention in your functional requirement specification document so we can easily understand from this video that urs is what is the expectation of a user and how we can what is the uh, it defines the goal of the business and frs is nothing but the way how to achieve the user requirement and how to fulfill the goal of the business so from this video we can easily identify that what are the frs requirement how to write frs if you want to understand the user requirement specification or urs of computer system validation then you can follow our another video that is based on how to write user requirement specification and the link is given in the description box so viewer this video is all about functional requirement specification another thing or another document that will generate from this functional requirement specification that is functional risk assessment you are defining this functional requirement specification or you are specifying your functional requirement and how the requirement will be achieved and how the system will access the system and what are the user level and how the user will access the system through different role from there itself the another document or another point is coming that is the risk so another topic is functional risk assessment in this functional requirement specification 
you may generate different level of risk. So to mitigate the risk, you have to generate or you have to guide another document that is functional risk assessment. So that topic we'll discuss in another video. So friends, this is all about functional requirement specification. If you have any other idea regarding functional requirement specification or functional configuration specification, then you write in the comment box. So thanks for watching this video. Thank you.